In this video, we will look at how we may go about using the tree diagram to solve prob probability-based questions. We look at how we may use it to solve problems involving dependent as well as independent um, variables. All right, so let's get straight into it. All right, so here's an example. Peter has 10 color cubes in a bag. Three of the cubes are red, seven of them are blue. We're told that he removes a cube at random from the bag and then he notes um, the color and replacing it, all right? Therefore, he just remove the cube from the bag, look at the color, and then he put it back in the bag, all right? So let's look at how this could be represented using the tree diagram. All right, so I'll just record it in this application. So there are 10 color cubes, three of them are red. So let's represent that. So we have three red and we have three and we have seven blue. So let's use this part for red, this part for blue. All right. So the first time Peter dipped his hand into the bag, if his selection is a red, so the fact that there are um, three red, so we're gonna have three out of 10 that is red. And if the first time he dipped his bag, his hand into the bag, there is blue, then he could select seven out of 10 that is blue, all right? Now, since he replaced the cube, there will always be 10 cubes in the bag. So if after selecting the first red, he dipped his hand in there a second time and he chose another red, then again, he's going to end up with total possibility of three out of 10. And if he dip his hand in there a second time after selecting the first red and he encounters a blue, then it's gonna be a total of seven out of 10, all right? So if you notice, it's always 10 because he always replaced the coin, all right? Again, if he dip his hand into the bag after selecting the first blue, and he found a red, then the probability of selecting the red is gonna be three out of 10, all right? If he dip his hand into the bag after selecting the first blue, then of course the probability is going to be seven out of 10 for the next blue, all right? Only seven out of ten. Now it therefore means that if you if you are asked to work out the probability of selecting a red followed by a red, so the probability of selecting a red followed by a red, that's going to be three out of ten multiplied by three out of ten, which is going to be equal to nine of 100, all right? Now, if we're asked to work out the probability of selecting a red and a blue, that's here, here, it's gonna be three out of 10, multiplied by seven out of 10. So I'll give you 21 out of 100. Right. If we're asked to work with the probability of choosing a blue followed by a red, that's going to be seven out of 10 multiplied by three over 10. All right, it's 21 over 100. And again, if we're asked to work with the probability of choosing a blue followed by a blue, that's going to be 
7 out of 10 multiply by 7 out of 10 and that gives us 49 out of 100 all right so that's how we would go about working out um, the probability using the tree diagram all right good all right so this is a situation where he would have um put back the the cube into the bag all right now what would happen now if he choose not to put back the cube in the bag all right so what if he decides now that he's not going to put back the cube into the bag now let's look at that possibility all right so this one so rebecca rebecca has nine cube color cubes or color beads in a bag four of the beads are black and the rest of them are green she removes a bead at random from the bag note the color um he notes the color before replacing it then she chose another one all right so this this is actually the same idea all right but we we can still work this out and then we can look at one where the person doesn't actually replace the cube so for this one this is what we'll end up with so there are nine beads in the bag and um we are told that four of the beads are black so if the first choice is a black it's going to be four out of nine and since the person replaced it that it means i put it back in the bag if they choose a second block it's going to be four out of nine um if after choosing the first block they choose a green it's going to be five out of nine and we got five because um if you have if you have nine beads four of them being blocked then the remaining is going to be four um five which is um green in this case all right and the same thing happens down here so if the first cube selected is a green it's going to be five out of nine and if after selecting the green it's like a block it's going to be four out of nine and so forth all right so it's the same idea as the one that we did before all right so let's jump to one now where we didn't have a replacement so we didn't put back the bead or the cube after looking at it um of a situation where a, a cube is drawn from the bag and it's not replaced so peter has 10 color cubes in a bag three of the cubes are red uh seven of them are blue he removes a cube at random from the bag and he, he notes the color but he doesn't replace it all right so he, it's like he take out the cube look at the color but he didn't he doesn't put back the, that cube into the bag all right so let's look at how this could be represented on the um tree diagram all right so i'll just use the paint application to do this all right so there are 10 cubes in the bag three of them are red so let's look at the first selection So we have 10 cubes. So we have red and we have blue. So the first selection would be, since three of them are red, so we have three out of 10, all right? So the first selection is a red, it's going to be possibility, or the probability is going to be three out of 10. If the first selection is a blue, it's going to be seven out of 10. All right. Now, if after making the first selection of a red, uh, remember that whenever a cube is selected in this scenario, um, it's not replaced. All right. So if the cube is not replaced, and this is a, an example of a dependent event, so if the cube is not replaced, that means instead of having nine, the next time around we're gonna have, instead of having 10, the next time around we're gonna have nine. So if the if we were to select another red, 
All right. So having selected one red, the fact that he didn't replace it, he didn't replace the red, therefore you're going to be left with just two more reds out of a total of nine. It's no longer 10 because it didn't replace the one. So we're down to nine. And because the first one was a red, the next um, possibility of a red is going to be two out of nine. Now, if after selecting the red one, he went on ahead and select a uh, blue. Again, we have not yet selected any blue. If the first thing that we selected is a red, and then it's like a blue. So no blue would have been selected yet. So we'd have over here a total of seven out of nine. Seven out of nine because we'd have selected one red already, but we didn't replace it. He didn't put back that red into the back. And so it is down to, to nine. All right. All right. Let's see. After selecting the first blue now, he selects a red. Again, since no red has been selected yet, and there are three reds, so it's gonna be three out of nine. Three out of nine because when the blue was selected, it was not replaced. And the same thing down here. If the next one after selecting a blue is a blue, then it's gonna be down to, since one blue has been selected already, so it's gonna be down to six blue, and the total is gonna be nine, because one would have been selected and not replaced. So it therefore means that the probability of selecting a red and a red, so selecting a red followed by a red would be equal to three out of 10, times two out of nine. So that's gonna be six out of 90. And the probability of selecting a red, it's red and blue. All right, so red followed by blue, it's gonna give you Three out of ten times seven of nine. It's going to give you a twenty-one out of ninety. Probability of selecting a blue followed by a red. So a blue followed by a red. It's going to give you seven out of ten. times three out of nine, 21 out of 90. And the probability of selecting a blue followed by a blue, that's gonna give you a seven out of 10 times six out of nine. All right, so it's going to be seven times six. All right, so that's that's what we, we would end up with. All right, so that's how we'd go about working on this one. All right, so thank you very much for watching. Now I'll just put it on the screen so we can see. There it is. All right, so red and red, three out of 10 times two out of nine. And red and blue, Three out of 10 times seven out of nine. And blue and red, seven out of 10 times three out of nine. And finally, blue and blue, 
7 out of 10 times 6 out of 9. All right, so thank you very much for watching. <laughs>